On this episode of Walk the Plank, we take you to Egypt to dig up some ancient cursed artifacts and see what happens. What a way to go to Egypt, too. Just take cameras. You don't even have to fly there. Yeah, no. Just we, watch a movie. That's it. Or, or if, if you want to be safer, we'll just take you behind the scenes of uh, tonight's episode of Dead and Buried Treasures, where you host the ghoul. It's going to be a good one, too, folks. Mm -hmm. I, so, I, this is a clean print, too. I've never seen... I, I never saw this movie till recently. Mm -hmm. This is Karloff's... I don't think it's Kar Boris Karloff's first work. No. But it's, it's, it's early, early work. stuff, though. Yep. So all that and more coming up next. Stick around. Welcome to Walk the Plank, the Dead and Buried Treasures pre-show. I'm your host, Rich Kanji, and to and my right... And a good host you are. No, oh, thank you. To my right is uh, series creator, star, actor, Bengals fan, and not the, the the football team either. I'm talking about Bengals. The, Basically the guy to blame. The uh, the 80s music <laughs> group that sung Walk Like an Egyptian, Eric Sprouse. <laughs> Walk like an Egyptian. Yeah, see, that's going to tie use, into that. If we, could, if we could use the music in the episode tonight, because this is all about Egypt. It is. That's yeah. why, that's why I said perfect. it. Yeah. What was the name of the... Gloria Estefan. That's who. If we could have got her on the show. Mm -hmm. Wasn't she the Miami Sound Machine that did, did Walk Like an Egyptian? No, that was uh, the Bengals. Wasn't Gloria Estefan on that? Wasn't she the lead singer, though? Well, I don't think so. Hey, we'll if you call in and let us know the answer <clears throat> to that, like in a break. So, I, I could have... Gloria Estefan... She started on the Bengals? I thought so. Walk like an Egyptian. Yeah. She, uh, How about that? And then she started out with the bangles. Yeah. Walk like an Egyptian. Right? No, I don't think so. Bro, all right. No? Uh, Miami Time Machine. Oh, I guess I have not crossed. Chris Christ. Right? Time Machine? Miami Time Machine. It's Sound Machine. Sound Machine. Whoops. I'm going to go back. <laughs> Let's keep going because this is good stuff. I want somebody to call in and tell me <laughs> an answer to that. Is my, did Gloria Estefan sing Walk Like an Egyptian? I, I thought she so. did. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go back I'm, to your thing. I'm more sure. me. Yeah, more you. <laughs> so this just turned into an 80s uh, music trivia show. Turn it back the clock. Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty sure because I, I know my 80s stuff. So if I'm wrong, I, I, I'm going to look it up in a break. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. All right. I'll use that and I'll let you know at the end of the show. Okay. It's not if nobody calls in about that. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> this this one's actually not about the 80s. We just had to hit the fan early, didn't it? <laughs> Dude. Oh, live no. TV. Okay, uh -huh. go I ahead, Rich. I'm sorry. I want to yeah. hear the answer to that, though. Yeah. So uh, tonight's episode is uh, featuring the Ghoul with uh, Boris Karloff. Yes. Oh, uh, and it's uh, it's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, as usual, this ties into your Dead and Buried Treasure show, which has an Egyptian theme. Yep. So uh, tell us a little bit about the Ghoul before we get into that. Uh, this is one of Karloff's uh, early works. Uh, you know, and a lot of people uh, don't. There are a lot of people who don't know who Bar Boris Karloff is. He's a legend mm -hmm. in the horror industry in, in Hollywood, really. Uh, he's got his name on the Walk of Fame, obviously. Um, but he, whenever you look at the Mummy or a picture of the Mummy or a poster of the Mummy or Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Uh, it's most likely him. It's it's him. It's yeah. his likeness right. uh, that made those su successful because he played both characters and brought them both. Literally to life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but this was a year beforehand. This was 1932. Uh, this was 12. You know, 12 years will be the 100th anniversary. Wow! If you think about See it. That? But this was 1932, and uh, <clears throat> it was a year before he did the Mummy. And they did a movie called The Ghoul. It's about an Egyptologist who dies, and uh, is when he's resurrected by those who violated his tomb. Uh, you know, he takes vengeance out. I, I don't know what the, I don't know what's that all about. Why why was everybody if you violate somebody's tomb, they're always taking vengeance? I'm gonna get you guys. Yeah. You can't stay off my lawn. 
And it's because nobody likes to be violated. But that's essentially what it's about. So <laughs> Karloff didn't, at least. Right. So, uh, so that's where the curse comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, so that's what the movie is tonight, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a great, it's a great movie. It's a clean print. Mm-hmm. The, you know, a little quick, a little background about this film first that you had mentioned is mm-hmm. uh, they lost this movie for like fifty years. Yeah. And then they found it in some British back room. Mm-hmm. On a movie set that they had abandoned and like walled over, they found a clean print. Yeah, a clean print of this film. It That's was shocking movie. because when I sent you a link for that, I, I honestly I didn't believe mm-hmm. that this was the actual movie. I thought it was a remake. Right. Because it was in s- such a high def picture quality right. to it that uh, I, I honestly had to actually watch at least a good quarter of it until I realized that really is Boris Karloff. Yeah. And this so, really is the movie. Like, I was very shocked to see, and I didn't understand it, and then you told me. So, yeah. so if you have more enthusiasts out there that uh, like that kind of stuff, this is a nice, clean print we're doing tonight. So mm-hmm. it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, as I said before, usually this always ties into uh, your storylines and Dead and Buried Treasures, whether yeah. they're standalone or whether they're part of the, uh, the main story that's going on there. Um, well, the, you know, the nice thing, too, and I want to say this, too, tonight, is mm-hmm. we have a sponsor tonight, the Carnegie Science Center over in Pittsburgh. Yes. Uh, who's got the Mummy exhibit mm-hmm. through mid-April. Uh, that's why we're hosting this movie tonight. Mm-hmm. So we want to say hi to them. Thanks. to the, they've, they've been a big help uh, taking us on tours the whole place, getting us over there with cameras and our DBT cameras. Yeah. You want to call it WDBT, like the after show? <laughs> yeah. The WDBT uh, cameras are getting in and showing some uh, uh, footage of the mummy exhibit. So we tied it all together. We have like mm-hmm. a, a mummy, kind of a mummy movie. Mm-hmm. We don't have the rights to the mummy, obviously. It's, right. So this is the next best thing. Right. We have like a mummy movie. We have an Egyptologist. It all ties into the show. Right. Uh, and I'm sure we have a special guest tonight that will tell you uh, the Carnegie Science Center is tied into the show, too. But your guest tonight will tell you a little bit more about uh, how right. it all works because together. Right, because she is a huge fan of... Um, the Egypt culture and, mm-hmm. and mythology. And you know her, I think. I do. I'm married to her. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Which is always a benefit, right? It is. It is. And uh, suck before... up points in now. <laughs> <laughs> she sits over in the green room. I know. She's, like, she's waiting to come on. She's right like, like, you better say something good. Yeah. Or I ain't coming out there. I'll screw your whole show. <laughs> Eh, we don't need you she's to She's looking down. You can't see. We have a, a green room camera. She's over here looking at it. She's giving us the live like that. Yeah. We look well, like that. <laughs> the shot's on you. We don't need you to screw this show. That's what we got him That's here That's right. For. He'll screw himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, tonight's going to be a lot of fun. we got all kinds of mummy stuff. Uh, we've never done a mummy movie or mummy uh, theme of any kind on the show yet. Right. So, this is going to be a lot of a new thing for it's us. It's going to be awesome. Yep. And, uh, you know, speaking of female character. Mm-hmm. Uh, your last show, where you hosted The Long Hair of Death, right. had a new female character Yeah, yeah. that you brought on, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about Adriana. Well, we had a lot of good feedback from the last show, which mm-hmm. was uh, we hosted The Long Hair of Death with Barbara Steele. I'm a big fan of Barbara Steele movies. And uh, it was neat because the movie was a little slow. I mean, if you, if you, if you watch the movie, it, if, you, if you need an explosion or a death every five minutes, it wasn't a few. It was very yeah. just creepy and scenic like you mm-hmm. know and it was that kind of thing but it was a woman power movie because mm-hmm. in the end you know, the, the dude behind everything he gets his comeuppance from the, you know the women yeah, you know and yeah. so i loved it because it was like a theme of what the, our, our climate is now in, in the world right so somebody had said well why don't you have something tie in with uh on the show like and i said okay so we had like a generational gap kind of thing where um i have to captain drake has to babysit his niece and so we got her on the show, and I found, I knew a young lady, I've known her for a long, ever since she, I was holding her like this. Mm-hmm. Her name's Adriana Bradley, and uh, she um, guest starred on the show as uh, my niece, and it was a lot of fun. In fact, if you look at some of these behind-the-scenes photos uh, that we have, um, yeah, there, there it is. We shot a lot in her home, and, uh, you know, we could, uh, the nice thing about the 21st century is we can take cameras wherever we want to go. Mm-hmm. We don't have to shoot everything in a studio. So we have a portable green screen, a couple of cameras, a couple of lights, and boom, we have instant movie magic in her home. And we right. shot this. <clears throat> we actually set up a green screen in her mom's living room that she was real happy about, I heard about mm-hmm. for quite a bit. But, yeah, that's how we worked it out. She was yeah. on the show, had a lot of great feedback. She had a lot of fun on the show. Mm-hmm. We even had phone calls for her. So it all worked out in the end. That was a lot of fun. Wow. 
Eric just all of a sudden got more attractive. Thank you. <laughs> Through the miracle of television, <laughs> I was able to uh, perform some magic and. Hey, boom. I'm still attractive. Uh oh. Look what you've done. Yep. <laughs> so uh, with me tonight is a Your very wife. special guest. Yep, my wife. <laughs> Don't screw this up. Uh, you know her as Gertie. Dana Messino Kanji is here to answer some questions that uh, we've put together and that people on Facebook is asking. The fans want to know. They do want to know. So um, this is a big episode for you, of course. It is. Huge episode. Very now, you've been in a lot of episodes, but this one is big. you got a big part in this. This um, might be my favorite. Yeah, I, I think so. So uh, we'll get into some questions real quick. Um, we do have one from Facebook. Kevin from Facebook actually asked, how did you get your start on Dead and Buried Treasures? So this was a great story. Um, Eric and I met through our mutual friend, a family friend of mine, Fury Mastracci. Uh, he's a producer on the show, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we all kind of met. Times. That's how we all met him. At a party, yeah. actually. <clears throat> Fury's birthday. And um, the rest was history. It was history. <laughs> we clicked. Yeah. We had some food, we had some drinks, and he told me about the show, and I thought, you know what, this would be so much fun. He was like, I can write something really cool, and it took off. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of which, tell us about your acting background. Oh, you know, I've been involved in a lot of theater, behind the scenes, um, and actually, I have to say, a lot of public speaking as far as training goes, career-wise, um, but it's always been something I wanted to get into, so this was a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then, how was it to work with Eric? I love Eric. Eric's the best. He's laughing at me right now. <laughs> but I'm telling the truth. <laughs> you just want a bigger part. Yeah. More scenes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> Eric is wonderful. He makes everything so easy for me. Uh, we have kids at home. We have busy schedules. Eric comes to the house. He sets up the scene. He writes me great lines, great parts, puts up the green screen. Um, he makes it such a fun experience that it just, it's a good time. I mm -hmm. look forward to it for fun. And uh, tonight's movie is The Ghoul, of course, as we yes. said. And you have a prominent role in that. So yeah. go ahead. Tell us so, about that. Oh, okay. So I am a huge fan of Egyptology. Um, this was right up my alley. When Eric told me about this movie, I thought, oh my gosh, what's he going to write me? Um, this is so exciting because... I get to play a character who kind of gets involved in some things with Egyptian funsies, we'll call them. And um, a lot of people don't realize that there is a character that I get to play that is based off of a real life character, um, a princess, in fact. So that kind of history for me, it's just near and dear to my heart. Um, I am lucky enough to have the world's best husband who dedicated our entire bedroom to my favorite Egyptian kings and pharaohs and queens, and I rock the jewelry, which I'm going to show off tonight. Yeah, um, you get to be all decked out in all your <laughs> Egyptian gear. Yeah. Yes, so this was <clears> just <throat> such a fun opportunity. I think it's going to be my absolute favorite. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm excited to see it. So uh, but I know a lot of people have asked me this. Um, being on the show, doing the host of the show. So I'm going to ask you, embarrassing moments. Any embarrassing moments or bloopers since you've been on quite a bit? I do not embarrass easily. No, I, don't. I don't. Bloopers, so many. So many. So anyone in particular? Um, <laughs> yes. You remember that time I shot you in the face? Mm. <laughs> yeah. It was the best blooper uh -huh. I ever had. I yeah, mean, so... Uh, <laughs> Eric couldn't she, keep a straight face. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't technically shoot me in the face. I kind of shot Let's roll that clip right now! <laughs> yeah. Yes! I'm always up for watching that again. Yeah, because uh, it was in the anniversary episode. Yes. Where I play the bad guy. And Eric's character, Captain Calico Drake, is holding the gun at me. But it's your hand. Yes. And I can't get it right. And, and you know, mm. and Eric is wonderful with direction. But I cannot always follow directions. So... He's like, hold the gun this way, and, and I'm doing it. And he's like, slowly move it down. And I go, click. <laughs> yeah, and she just pulls the trigger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> So, yeah, I'm never putting a gun in your hand. No. Um, so, lastly, I got to ask, 
what's the best part about playing Gertie? There are so many. I'd have you guys here all night. Um, you know, Gertie is such a fun character. She gets to be the sassy, kind of trying to keep everybody in check, but pretty and fun and the wine. Hello, like the wine. Who doesn't want to have wine at work? Not that I'm actually drinking while at work. It is grape juice. But that is your favorite part, though. I mean, that you kind of brought that character to I, life I, with I the wine, like with yeah. the wine bottles. I mean, that's, that's yeah, you. Because I love grape juice. Yeah. You love I drink grape it all juice. the time. Here's your grape juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you might need some extra grape juice. It's getting low. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. This is empty. I'm Got sorry. It. There you go. So there you have it. Well, it's been fun, and I can't wait to watch tonight's episode. This is going to be awesome. Um, so thank you for being on. Thank you uh, for having me. This was great. Yeah, this I was. Can't wait. It's, it's, they're probably going to want more of you on here. So sorry, Eric. You're probably going to be out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of a job. Yeah, it's the Rich and Gertie show now. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can hear it now. Wow. <laughs> Fans out there, write in and oh, say you want geez. Gertie back. Yeah, right. <laughs> Studio techs would love it. Yeah. <coughs> Gertie fan club. <laughs> so. <coughs> Gertie artwork and statue. There's coming. <laughs> so thanks for being here. Um, thanks for I, having me. You said you earlier you brought a clip for us. I did. I did. Scenes. I brought a clip. I can't wait for you guys to see it. I think you're going to love it. Yeah. So here you go. Behind the scenes clip of... Gertie in action. Yes, along with Gertie Green in Street. action. So you get it. You get to see it here first, folks. Play it now. Play it. You, you got <laughs> and it. And there. <laughs> when you walk in, you're looking down at me, lowering this like you just knew. Maybe just give one of these at the end, like, so you know that it's cleaned out, so we know that you did it. Mm -hmm. and you say you're correct, Captain. After all, you are the star of the show, but you're essential to my plan. I say the whole thing, looking down. Uh -huh. Okay. All right? Okay. Perfect. Um, and your last line. That is not, this is not negotiable, Calico. Make it happen. Action. This is not negotiable, Calico. Make it happen. Okay. Well, that was... Oh, I know, right? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you know, but well, I, I, that was a it was a kind of an interesting segue. But you know, that was a lot of fun with the behind the scenes stuff. That's actually coming up tonight's episode. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about that is you get to take a look at it green screen, like what it really looks like yeah. in your living room, yeah, or, or or Dana's living room, because everybody's like, oh wow, you're not on a pirate ship, no, no. you don't have these backgrounds, no. <laughs> yeah. no. All one, uh, we said it before, a hundred percent of the show yeah. is a special yeah. effect. That's right. Yep. That's why it's so good. So, yeah, that was really neat. And yeah. you did a good job on shooting that, too, when we're working with uh, the missus. Yeah, you know? thanks. That was good stuff. Yeah. She did a great job. Yeah. She's a natural. Yeah, she's really good at what she does. That's why I like her on the show. Mm -hmm. And she's so well-spoken. Mm -hmm. She's very clear. She's very concise. I've worked with a lot of actresses out there that have that mush mouth. Where it's right. Like, oh, yeah. It's like they talk like rock. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not like, like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, but she's very well, on point. I like that. That's good. Keep, good. keep talking her up. This way it's just more bonus points for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, she said when we started doing the show tonight, she says, well, we're going to have some new episode, and we walk the flag, mm -hmm. new after show. Let's get some wine out. There you oh, go. All right. All right. There you the go. grape juice, the kind she promotes <laughs> on the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> moving us right along, because we're, we're flying through here. Yeah, we've got to get some phone calls. In here. We do got to get phone calls, because yeah. that is your favorite part. It is. I love talking to the fans. Yes. And we do have some people lined up here. Hey, and, it, and I know Gertie's in the green room watching this. And mm -hmm. If there's a phone call about you on here tonight, you're going to have to come yeah. answer. you got to come back. Okay. All right. All right. I'll run in. So our first caller is Love from it. Bethel Park, my personal favorite. He's, oh, right here. He's called before. Yep. David. Oh, it's David. I was going to say David. Colin. No, Colin's in Charlotte. Colin, right. No, Colin's in Charlotte. Regulars. He's another regular. But David, uh, see, I, got, I got your name right this time. The queue's full again, yes. so I knew David's in there somewhere. David's in there. David, David how are you tonight? Hey, guys. Hey, David. Uh, David, yep. again from Bethel Park. <laughs> I called in a couple weeks ago, and um, I know this might be kind of like out of date, you know, out of time, but I do have questions about the anniversary show mm -hmm. you guys did. And I think that um, Dirty Dirty looks fabulous in her dress. Yep. And I want to know like what she was wearing, and also, um, you know, Rich was like awesome, like that suit that he wore, mm -hmm. very Thank handsome. You. 
Thank you. You know, and Drake, you always look good, Eric. You know, you always look good in that, that pirate costume. Uh, but I just wanted to say, you did a fabulous job in that anniversary show. I really um, I took it in and appreciate it. And I can't wait to see what you're doing in the future for your upcoming season, you know, your second season of shows. And I'm looking now, we'll see more to Siren, you know, maybe see what she looks like. I, 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 I'm, I know you're, like, teasing me. Mm. But uh, yeah. I want to know what she looks like. And I just really think that you guys are doing great. Well, thank you, David. Thank you, David. Appreciate also, it. Also, I want to say, sorry to interrupt you, but also sorry. I just want to say that, uh, you know, I introduced it to my cousins and everything, and now we all watch the show together. Oh, very good. And it's just, <clears throat> it's just awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome sauce. <laughs> yeah, we need a little awesome sauce once in a while. Yeah, we thank do. you. Yeah, thank you, David. And um, like the feedback. You know, it's a Venetia dress. There you go. It's a Venetia dress. There you go. Now you there. know the dress she wore. How about that? I wanted to hear uh, David. David, you still there? No. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to hear what he thought about the last show. Oh, well, well, I'm sure he'll call back. Show. I'll call back. He's yeah. he is now my favorite fan. <laughs> That's so, like, and of course, Rich, you look sexy in your suit. Yeah, you're, my, you're our number one fan now. So send, send him a Calico Drink <laughs> statue, will you? Send your uh, uh, fan mail to yeah. uh, rich at bighead.com. Yeah, and we'll send you a Calico Drink decoder statue. That's right, there you go. Because you, you've just made the top list of fans here, buddy. Thank you for calling, David, as always. Yeah, thanks, David. Appreciate it. So let's go to uh, Bill Vernon with, oh, okay. uh, with Bill. At our CU TV audience. What's going on, Bill yeah. Vernon? Hey, this is uh, Bill from Bill Vernon. Hi, Bill. <clears throat> I called in not so long ago to the after show, and you had mentioned at that time about um, Robert Conrad being a big influence mm -hmm. as he stole the show, and like the Wild Wild West, and how he <clears throat> based like some of the themes or where you're going with the mythology on that show. So, and in later of Robert's passing, Robert Conrad, he passed yeah. away. Um, I went and up, yeah, he asked work about him. And then he did Bob Bob Black Sea, Black, Black um, Chief Squadron, and uh, other shows. And he did, like, the, the commercials where he had the battery on his cellar, the battery. <laughs> and he's like, hey, punch this. Yeah. Like, I like you, Eric. I do, I remember and, this. I remember this I just spot. wanted to know, um, how does that impact, how... How do you feel about that? And just, just want to pay respects. Um, by the way, I love the show. I love the direction it's going in with the whole mythology. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just want to know if you want to have a few words about Robert. Uh, yeah, okay. well, I did. Uh, yeah, Bill, I appreciate that. Thanks for the call. Uh, Robert Conrad was not an influence on the creation of Dead and Buried Treasures, but he was mm -hmm. a, an influence on that particular episode because I kind of... You know, they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah. So there was an episode of the old Wild Wild West show where, I can't remember exactly what happened, I have to review it again, but like, you know, Jim West, you know, wakes up, and he's, he's like a James Bond in the 1800s, in this case, for those who have never seen the show. He wakes up, and he goes through this whole thing, and it turns out the whole thing was made and faked, and mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of what happens with the show. So, uh, yeah, it's a sad thing that he passed. Uh, I, I knew, believe it or not, uh, I actually knew the creator of Bubba Black Sheep. Bill had mentioned Bubba Black Sheep, which yeah. is Robert Conrad's next show after this. Mm. Donald Belisario is from the area. Mm. He actually grew up in Kochberg, and I had talked to him a couple of times. Uh, and He's gone on to magnificent stuff. He created Battlestar Galactica, and Magnum B.I., and Quantum Leap, and all these things. That's my shows. favorites right there. And he does uh, that, uh, the one with uh, Mark Harmon now. Um, oh, NCIS so like, or, NCIS, I think maybe. Yeah, one yeah. of those CISs. He does a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, it's 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 amazing, you know, how Robert Conrad uh, affected a lot of people's lives, especially mm -hmm. in the pop culture industry. And he just doesn't get the the credit that he really deserves. So yeah, it was a really nice salute to uh, Robert Conrad. Yeah, yep. definitely had a good time with that. Let's head to Bethel Park. Bethel we, Park again. All right, oh, we're in the hometown area. Yep. Right? Our flagship station. We have uh, Johnny from Bethel Park. Johnny. Yep. How you doing tonight? Eric. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Johnny Mariano, Bethel Park. We met at the Bethel Park TV Awards banquet in December. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm watching your show now. Oh, thank I'll you. I'll send you a message on Facebook. Great, fantastic show. Happy anniversary. 
Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate that. Take care. Bye. Uh, thank well, you. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Johnny. I appreciate the the, the feedback. That mm -hmm. was that was nice. Yeah, I bumped into him at uh, the BBTV Awards at the end of uh, last year around yeah, Christmas, Christmas time, and uh, Dead and Buried Treasures that time walked away with one of the uh, best program awards that night. So that was awesome. nice. That was a nice. Nice to say <clears throat> we're award winning now. Yeah, yeah how about it's that? It's nice to say that. That's know? very good. Congratulations. Thanks for calling in, Johnny. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. you. Yep. And uh, we got time for one more call, uh, caller here, and it is it's got Colin. Colin. Yes. Yeah. Our man Colin, he is back. Welcome back, Colin. How you doing, Colin? Hey, good. Uh, Colin from Charlotte. Long hey. time caller. Uh, you probably remember me from, I asked a question before. Yep. Uh, yeah. uh, Kung Fu movies, right? Kung yep. Fu movies yep. on your show. Yep. I don't mean to press the issue, but <laughs> there's a movie I'm called let it uh, die. Legend of the Seven Vampires, seven, Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, yes. which was a Hammer film slash Shaw Brothers kind of production. <laughs> so it had Peter Cushing in it. <laughs> and you gotta get that cloth look there, Colin. The Shaw Brothers that movie was, was Hammer. And I didn't know if that would be copyrighted. Hmm. I like film too, I like horror, you know. But, I mean, I like what you do. You guys are good. But, just wanted to put that out there for you. Didn't know if you were aware of it. I have. Thanks, Colin. Well, yeah. yeah. I know you said you'd never do like a Kung Fu movie, but this is like a little different, so that's why I'm asking. Right. right. That's true. <clears throat> well, that's true. I'm glad you asked, because uh, I'm with you on all that. I've, I've said the same thing with him about some kung fu movies, and we talked last time you called. I believe we were talking about uh, possible kaiju movies. So since you like that whole culture of uh, kung fu, some kaiju mixed in, you might have Gamera mm -hmm. showing up. But that's that's a great question. Is that movie public domain? You know, I, I did a little research back in January when we had some uh, copyright issues with uh, Count Dracula and his Vampire Bride. Mm -hmm. And I came across this particular film. Oh, really? It was called The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Mm -hmm. And Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing were asked to come back and do this movie. Uh, Lee turned it down flat. Mm -hmm. uh, Cushing, however, stayed on board. And I think they actually kept the char his character, Van Helsing, going. Really? In this particular film. Wow. But Lee couldn't do it. So I looked. It's public domain. Well, there you it go. It is. It's, it's actually uh, public domain. So we might... See what we can do in swinging this for you. I'm not the big on the kung fu stuff. Yeah. And as I just don't. I know there's an appeal there, but everybody, you know, there are people out there who says, "Why do you like Star Trek?" I'm like, I love Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't ever watch it. You know. So I get that too. But I guess I'm gonna have to see what the appeal is. Now there is a, a way to use it on our show now because mm -hmm. it has the uh, horror theme. Right. And Peter Cushing. Right. And so if that's the case, then, then I think that'd be kind of fun. Well, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, yeah. Thank you, Colin. Thanks for everybody that called in. Thank you for our special guest tonight. Half hour goes fast, doesn't it? It does, Jeez. but we need to get to the ghoul Yep. and this yep. episode, so I can't and wait to watch it. it's start right here. Yep, so Get the around. wine ready. Here we go. Or the grape juice. Wine's ready. There you go. <laughs> so stick around. The ghoul's coming up next. All right, you, you wrap it. I'm going to get some wine. Good. Okay, go ahead and wrap it up. I'm enjoying the wine over here. All right. <laughs> Oh, the things I do for TV. We'll see you next week, right? Maybe. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs>